Good morning, church, and welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to each of you joining us online. We appreciate your connection with us, and you are seeing the friends that are joining you here in this space as the camera goes around. And friends, we invite you to welcome the people who are watching us online. We appreciate your connection with us, and we pray that you hear Christ speaking to your heart during this service. We invite you who are online to gather food and drink to join us in communion later on. And you may send your greetings or prayer concerns via Facebook live chat as we do welcome each of you during this time. A special welcome to our in-person visitors this morning. It is our prayer that you experience a meaningful worship service and a caring group of folks looking forward to getting better acquainted with you. Please plan to stay after worship for some birthday cake as we celebrate Mary and B's 100th birthday today. <laughs> Our centenarian is with us this morning, and we are so grateful that we can celebrate St. Patrick's Day and the St. Marion's Day <laughs> today. Um, and there is a card back there, if you didn't get a card, or even if you didn't get a card, you uh, asked to go ahead and sign the card in the back if you would like, as we celebrate her birthday. Uh, and there are some cookies, or donuts courtesy uh, as well, to honor this day of St. Patrick's Day. Uh, this is a time after worship for you to meet somebody you don't know, and uh, share in the joy of being family together. Other announcements for our church family include the Lunch Bunch is gathering this Tuesday at Dawn's Sandwich Shop at 11.30 a.m. Sign up on the back table so we can let them know how many to expect. The Finance and Board are meeting this Wednesday. If this applies to you, please try and be present as your voice is important. And of course, anyone is welcome at our board meetings. The book study concludes this Friday with the last of the book uh, being read. Uh, be watching after Easter for another adventure in learning and reading together. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, the transitional start of Holy Week leading up to Easter. In our first service, our children will be starting off our worship service with a parade of palms just as was done over 2,000 years ago when Jesus rode into Jerusalem that final week before he died. Holy Week will be filled with several opportunities to relive that final week, including a Passover meal at Pilgrim Church, where we will all sit together around the table and experience the words which led to the institution of the Last Supper that we honor every Sunday morning in worship, also known as Communion. Uh, a Jewish Seder meal will be part of this service, and therefore reservations are needed. Please sign up on the back table or call into the office, and we will get your reservation in for that meaningful service. A free will donation of $10 is requested, but we will cover everyone who can't afford that, uh, as we are most interested and concerned that you participate and have a seat at the table. That will be on Thursday, March 28th at 6 p.m. at Pilgrim. On Good Friday of that Holy Week, there will be a special tenebrae service of candlelight at First Methodist in which we are looking for four readers from our church. If you're willing to be a reader, please let me know after church. And our choir will join with the other choirs uh, from other, uh, other churches for a joint choir led by our choir director and our accompanist. We are grateful to share Jim and Zonia with the whole community of churches here in Reading uh, for that uh, inter-church experience of Good Friday. A Saturday vigil is planned at St. James, James Lutheran on Holy Saturday, the eve before Easter, and you are invited to participate in that at 7 p.m. Then on Easter morning starts with the outdoor sunrise service at 7 a.m. in the parking lot facing west to greet the morning sun. Then there will be breakfast afterwards. You're uh, requested to sign up for that so we know how many to expect. 
Flowers, fresh cut flowers are needed for that day to decorate our, uh, decorate our cross. The choirs, both the children's choir and our adult choir, will be singing on Easter morning at the 930 service. We hope you will plan to be a part of that. Invite your friends and family to celebrate uh, new life and resurrection that morning. Are there other announcements for our church family? Margie? Before I tell you about the thrift store schedule, I want to tell you the most important part of the thrift store. It's you as individuals. We don't pay for our inventory. We can cover the rent. But don't put yourself at risk. If you feel a customer is making you uncomfortable or something like that, just tend to your own safety. You don't need to protect the thrift store. Um, but as far as the thrift store schedule is full, it's full. It's full. We've got okay. all slots filled. Great. Thank you very much. All right. There, uh, yes, Marcia. There's good news for me. Let me get you a microphone, Marcia, so they can hear you at home, okay? There's good news for the oops, hold the ripples. For the people, for the homeless people. Do you, you remember a couple of years ago, Lowe's wanted to come to Reading, and they were turned down because there was an area where they now have their store that was set supposed to be for the low-income housing. So Lowe's paid to the city a goodly amount of money to get the right to build the store that we now see. Well, finally, the city is releasing some of that money to the groups of people who are setting up these little houses. So now, as we get near the end of having three openings, they find things, of course, that they need to buy to finish. And money is coming in from the Lowe's Fund. So that's, finally, that's good. And the other thing is there will be a presentation to the city group on April 2nd at the city council meeting and the United Fund has been doing so nicely of contributing to all of this will be give a presentation. You're invited to come and listen to what has happened and what is coming. I really enjoy every Thursday there's a meeting and this last Thursday I cheered when I thought, oh good, it's <laughs> coming in to apply my, and hopefully soon there will be an opening for Good Water Crossing. Great, thank you very much. Marcia. Thank you. <laughs> so please put on your calendar, uh, April 2nd, Tuesday, April 2nd at 6 p.m. City Council meeting. It is important for our Reading City Council to hear or at least see the presence of people who believe strongly that the unsheltered who are simply trying to get uh, back on their feet again have a place to go that is secure. And so they need to be reminded that there are folks in Reading that want to see the micro shelter project move forward uh, without delay. And so your presence at city council, you don't have to speak, you don't have to do anything, but be there and cheer on the United Way as they seek to move this forward. Believe me, you do make a difference. So thank you. Uh, are there other announcements for our church family? Yes. Yes. Um, this is an invitation to everybody. We will be redecorating for Easter on March 30th, Saturday at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome. This Saturday? This Saturday or Polly's Saturday? March 30th. March, oh, the day before Easter. Got it, thank you. <laughs> okay, are there other announcements? If not, then I invite you to take a deep breath and allow God's presence to meet you in this time and place as we listen to Zonia play the break.
came with an open and seeking heart. Oh, please stand. <laughs> Jesus came with an open and seeking heart. In so doing, he was lifted up as a source of God's salvation to draw all people to God. Come to worship with open and seeking hearts. We gather in God's presence that our broken hearts will be purified and restored. Let our minds be cleansed as God's love pours in and mercy floods our souls. Create us anew, O God. Restore the joy of our salvation as we offer our voices in praise to you. Please open your chalice to praise number 138 on yours.
Chalice Praise number 91. Create in me a clean heart. <coughs> Green hair. 
Because I thought that would be really fun on St. Patty's Day. Do you know that some people dye their hair on green today? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. What would you like to say today, Liam? Uh, you know, yesterday, the leprechaun, uh, Ashley, uh -huh. put giant golden nuggets at the house. There were giant golden nuggets <coughs> from a leprechaun? Like this big. Wow, that's cool. Did you find them? Were they hidden? Were they hidden so hard you couldn't find them? No, you're really smart. You found them. Even better than this. Even better than the Easter You mean to tell me the leprechaun hides better than the Easter bunny? Oh, I'm impressed with that leprechaun. Well, I want, I'm want. i not going to hide these from you today. I, the reason they're green is because even though Patrick was from a country called Britain, he was abducted. He was stolen and sold as a slave in Ireland. And so he grew up more in Ireland and he became a fan of Ireland. And their colors are green. So we wear green for Ireland today. And we remember that Patrick believed in God. And when he was really scared, he prayed to God. And God gave him courage. Even while he was a slave, he prayed to God and God took care of him. So why green? Because of Ireland. Ireland's colors were green. So, and a little bit of gold, yes, and white. And so we wear that to remember that he was a saint that reminded us how important it is to pray to God. So I'm going to send you home with some beads. I'm going to let Zeke, Zeke is the youngest, so he gets to choose. Which one do you want, Zeke? Which one do you want? The youngest gets to choose one. You get to choose one. Which one do you want? You want that one? Okay, you get that one. So Zeke gets that one. Then the next youngest, you get to choose. Which one do you want to take home? You're going to choose that, and which one would you like? I like this one. Anyone? You, okay, way cool. And. I just want to show you, I got this at our thrift store. In case you haven't visited our thrift store, there was lots of St. Patrick's Day things. What are those? Do you know what those are? There's, except that's, it's only three. One, two, three. Yeah, it should be four, huh? Because four is lucky. Uh -huh. But this is a three-leaf clover. I know that. Yeah, and I wonder, clovers are what color? Purple? Oh, yeah. I just said that's right. So I know. So they're so that's why we collect clovers on St. Patty's Day because they're orange. No. What's that color again? Green. Gosh, I keep forgetting that. You're gonna teach me, right? My colors. Will you teach me my colors? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because you're so smart, <laughs> and I appreciate your patience. Miss Riley, because you're I way up here smart. So anytime I want to know what color I'm talking about, you can help me. Okay. Can we thank God for green today? Can we thank God for green? What else can we thank God for? What else can we thank God for? Leprechauns. Leprechauns. Okay, we'll thank God for leprechauns. What else can we thank God for? Yes. Uh, so we oh. found something at the world market. It was sour cream and shamrock flavored oh, potato yeah, chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, sour cream and shamrock flavor. Oh, and they were potato chips. Pretty good. So okay. innovative. And we thank God for meat. potato chips. Okay. <laughs> yes. What can we thank God for? Uh, what else? Can we a giant golden nugget as big as a that giant house. giant golden nugget. Okay. As big as a house. Okay. So show me how we get ready to pray in this place. We fold our hands and we close our eyes and repeat after me, okay? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For the color green. For the color green. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For leprechauns and potato chips. For leprechauns and potato chips. And thank you, God, for giant nuggets as big as a house. Amen. Thank you all so much.
our children guide us into a time of prayer. And as we do, I ask that you will be with the family of Sean Buckley. This is Pat F.'s brother, Leora C.'s father, Aaron R.'s uncle, Olivia's great uncle, who passed away on Thursday night from a lengthy illness. Our hearts break with this family. Many of you watched Leora grow up in this church, and we hurt for the whole family. Please uh, keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, we celebrate that Rob W.'s cast is now off, and he is on the mend. We say thank you, God, for that. Uh, prayers for uh, Rhonda's daughter, Lexi, who this week was diagnosed with Wolf's Parkinson's, not anything to do with Parkinson's disease, white. Wolf's Parkinson's white syndrome, which causes a heart murmur, makes her blood pressure go up and down. She collapsed this week. They spent four hours in the emergency room, which finally uh, verified that Lexi has this genetic disease and will need to be treated for this. So prayers for Rhonda, our videographer, uh, Justin, her husband, and Lexi during this difficult time uh, as they go through this uh, new awareness. We pray for Lynn R. She is sick and not getting better uh, and trying to find out what's going on. So please pray for Lynn uh, uh, and hopefully uh, doctors can find out what's going on and help her to get better. We pray for all those affected by the wars going on in Ukraine, Gaza, and Haiti. We pray for the border crisis and wisdom and courage and decision making and setting politics aside. Are there other concerns or celebrations? Yes, Linda. Uh, please for Gail. For Gail A. Gail A. Yes. Gail A. She's heading down tomorrow and today. Yes. She's down at her, her market. Yes. So her son Mark's funeral is coming up uh, the first weekend of April. Prayers for Gail uh, as she prepares to honor her son and go through the unthinkable, and that is to bury a child. Are there other concerns or celebrations we can share? Uh, Ron. I'd like to continue prayers for Annie. It's been four weeks since she broke her ankle, and she is still in considerable discomfort. Okay, prayers for Annie as she goes through recovery from her broken ankle. Yes, Linda. I'm sorry, I'm going to work with Chris Celeste's uh, friend, daughter, Laura. She uh, has had chemotherapy treatments for a long time, and now her heart is giving her problems. Oh. So for Celeste, friend's daughter, Laura, who has been undergoing chemo, and now the heart is giving her issues. Yes, Julie. Um, prayers for Steph <clears throat> and her family. Her father is becoming very weak and tired and getting a little bit. Prayers for Steph E., uh, whose uh, father, she used to attend this church and she has moved. Uh, her father is getting weaker and weaker. And um, so we pray for Steph and the whole family in that time. Uh, yes, Marcy. Prayers for the uh, mentally ill homeless people who are in desperate need of care and who step to come to step up and, and, and provide that care for them. Yes, so prayers for the mentally ill um, and homeless on our streets, yes. Margie? A prayer for two unnamed people that okay. um, had a rough and traumatic day yesterday. Prayers for uh, unknown named folks, God knows who they are, who had a rough day yesterday. Uh, Kathleen? Joy to see Ellis here with us. We do celebrate Ellis's presence yeah. up in the choir. Um, we're so grateful that Ellis is here and uh, continued prayers for him uh, and we surround him with love. We are very grateful. Are there other concerns? Uh, Leslie? We celebrate Barbara Lock back with us again. Yeah, Barbara yeah. Ellis with us as well at the back. So good to have you. And Mia, Bella, and Charlene. Yes. <laughs> if there are no others, then I invite you to get comfortable and allow God to surround you with love and mercy. And let us share what weighs on our hearts with God in this time of quiet time.
precious God of all creation. We offer you our praises for the way you come to fill our empty lives with love and tie us together for a greater purpose on this earth. You gifted us with a Savior with whom we can relate, who knows what it is to come before you with loud cries of pain and suffering, with doubts of how to go on, with questions about our purpose. We long to follow in Christ's ways so that we might discover hope in the midst of our difficulties, a sense of peace in the midst of unrest, and free us from those things that block our ability to walk the path that is most healthy for us. Take away our prideful tendencies and our reliance on our own egos rather than your guidance. Forgive us when we fail to see others as your children, when we dehumanize those who don't live up to our expectations. Restore us with new eyes to see the world as you do, and with new ears to hear the cries of your people as you hear them. Grant that we may love and serve you and others as you have called us to do. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, our mentor and example. Amen.
Our scripture for today is Hebrews 5, verse 5 through 10. Uh, in the New Testament, that's page 220 in your Bibles. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Sorry. Um, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Death. Mel Melchizedek. One of those fancy words. Super good. They put that in there. <laughs> in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his, because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. There it goes again. <laughs> I told him whatever uh, comes out of his mouth is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got me there, bud. He walked out the door and I said, you better come back. <laughs> Today we are doing things a little bit differently in this time. Inspired by the words from the book of Hebrews, one of the most difficult books of the Bible to understand, as well as some of the most bizarre words, as Randy uh, shared with you, to pronounce. Uh, I want to try a new approach this morning and ask one of our folks who's been a part of our church for quite a while now, how the words of this text become real in his own life. Particularly, we are going to single out the phrase in verses 7 and 8. Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. He learned through what he suffered. To begin with, I want to give Bud Houston an opportunity to tell us a bit about himself, what uh, was his job and for how long, and why he chose this particular job. Well, I've, I've made some mistakes in my life. <laughs> I, I started off uh, in the church uh, when I was three years old uh, down in Pomona, California. Uh, my grandmother was the secretary of the church. My mom and dad met in the church during the war. And I was baptized, or I wasn't baptized there, but I, was, I grew up in the church. And then moved to Ukiah where I continued and finally graduated from high school and went on to college. I, I have been involved in, in uh, the church for a long time, uh, even in Fortuna where I was working and going to school, uh, as well as Sacramento and pretty much everywhere else I've been. Uh, as far as getting into police work, uh, when I was in high school, I took the SAT test, the ACT test, and they said I had the uh, ability, because of my grades, to be either a ditch digger, 
a pastor. Not to keep them. Or a truck driver. Because and, they uh, have so much in common, right? Is, uh, right along the line. And uh, I no, I, I want to be a draftsman. I like mechanical drafting and architectural drafting. And they, you'll never make it. You'll never make it. You don't have the grades. You can't go to college. And I thought, I can go to junior college. So I did. I went to junior college where I took up drafting and did okay. Uh, but the professor and I didn't get along. Oh. And um, anyway, so I was walking across the campus one day and the chief of police from Fortuna was walking towards me. And I'd never met the man. And he stops me and he says, are you Bud Houston? I go, oh, crud. <laughs> yeah, what I do. And uh, so he started talking to me. He said, well, we're going to launch. I was 18, I think, at the time, maybe 19. Uh, he said, we're going to launch uh, a program as an uh, uh, auxiliary policeman. And uh, it, would you be interested in, in applying for it? And I go, yeah, I would. So I applied and they accepted me and I worked my way up to where I could carry a gun and, you know, be sworn in. And um, finally I got to the point where if somebody was on vacation or sick or whatever, then I, you know, filled in for them. And so I was out there on the streets by myself and I, I made a lot of uh, mistakes, a lot of regrets that I wish I could go back and change. One thing I remember is a little boy got hit running out into the street by a car and um, I got to the scene and he wound up paralyzed, but he um, was hit by a drunk driver and that ticked me off, but I didn't know what to do. And there was no one around, there, my, my closest backup if I ever got into trouble was like 15 minutes at least away. So there was no one else around to call, ask, anything else. So the only thing I could give this man, part of it was the little boy's fault, but a lot of it was his fault. But the only thing I could do was write this guy a ticket for a dead doe that he had poached. It was in the back of his car. And, and I just, I thought about that all my life. And that's one reason I, to this day, don't like drunk drivers at all. And uh, I'll do anything I can to get him brought to justice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Bud, we read in this convolu convoluted book of Hebrews uh, about Jesus and what he experienced in his lifetime, which gave him the, some of the qualifications and qualities to be called the Son of God. Also, the things that l Jesus lived through that we might l identify with. It tells us that Jesus prayed with loud cries and tears to the one who is able to save him from death. And he learned through what he suffered. This directly refers back to those moments the night before Jesus is crucified when he prayed to God in the Garden of Gethsemane, saying, take this cup away from me. It is one of the most profound moments in Jesus' life, a moment where he had to make a decision who he was going to be, who he was going to listen to, we, in this group, worship with each other on a regular basis in this place, but rarely do we have the opportunity to openly reflect on those times when we have, may have prayed with loud cries and tears to God. And we might just be surprised how many of us know what that feels like. So I ask you, Bud, as you sit with us this day, have there been such moments in your life? Never. Never. <laughs> That's why we're here. <laughs> yes. My wife and I married in 1995, 75. <laughs> She's back there. She's watching you all. Yeah. Um, and we had one son. Uh, when we were down in Woodland, at the, um, and I was a police officer there. <laughs> and um, we didn't know that she had any medical issues going on, and she became pregnant with our second son, Ben. 
This was 1976. <laughs> it's been a while. Anyway, she was pregnant with him, and I had just taken, actually 78, I think it was. Um, she had, I had just taken a job up here in Reading. And she was still down there with the house. We were selling the house. And um, she was, was pregnant and down there by herself with our son. Uh, her parents didn't live too far away, thank goodness. But uh, I was home on a, a weekend, and, and all of a sudden she, it was time to deliver. Well, it was three months early. And so we took her to the hospital, and they transferred her to uh, UC Davis. Our son was born three months early and was, um, what, two pounds, ten ounces, I think, um, and lived for ten days. It was really hard, and um, when we, when I left to come home, back up here to Reading, um, all I could do the whole trip from Sacramento to Reading was cry, yell, scream, ask God why, I probably cussed him out, I don't know, <laughs> but I couldn't understand, but I cried and cried for a long time, and for a long time all I could do was blame myself. I don't know what for, but, you know, and I know that my wife did the same kind of thing, where she was asking questions and wondering why this happened to us. So, yes, and there have been other times that, that God has been there and for us and, and guided us through these the hard times. What about um, the majority statistics show that the majority of couples that go through this unspeakable uh, realization of losing a child do not make it. Um, uh, it causes uh, irreparable harm. Um, uh, and there are other things that police officers go through uh, with their spouses that cause um, uh, difficulties. Uh, where have, have you seen um, uh, that play out in your life? Yes, far, far too often. <clears throat> um, police officers, firemen, servicemen, um, they there's a tendency when you're out in public and working with the public for people to be attracted to the uniform. And unfortunately, some officers, some firemen, some Air Force people, Marines, whatever, Army, they, they give in to it and, and they open the door or let the door continue. And I've had numerous times at coffee pot, uh, restaurants and, uh, and things where, you know, women have come up and tried to be more friendly than what I wanted and appreciated or anything. And, and, and I've seen it with firefighters also with, with all kinds of people. And there's so, such a temptation that it's sad that it, it goes on. And, and I thank the Lord that, uh, that I was able to keep my perspectives in place. Um, I shared last week about a sergeant uh, that uh, told me that I had my priorities wrong, but um, I, I was very happy and very proud that, uh, uh, that I was able to, to keep my focus on my family, including my church family. It, it requires uh, sometimes that which seems almost um, beyond the human capability to do. Uh, because of the things that you are asked to do in the line of work and you become vulnerable and uh, it's very difficult to work through those times. Um, so uh, it, it, when it speaks of Jesus uh, crying out with loud cries and tears, it sounds to me like you know what that is. Um, uh, what does it mean to you uh, to have um, a model in Jesus that understands that kind of pain uh, and suffering. Uh, how has that shaped you over your life? Through my career, I've, I've found that um, Jesus and God, they, God does not turn their back on you. God is there for you every step of the way. 
even though so often you don't feel it. I reflect back on the time of the, the, the saying where uh, Jesus and a man was walking, a person was walking and on the seashore, and there was two sets of footprints, and then it became one, and, and the man asked God, well, why, where you left me? And God knows, no, I was carrying you. And I, I think that, I, I look back in my career, and I know that there are times when I've had to shoot uh, my weapon at people uh, twice. I've had guns pulled on me. I've been shot at. I, it, it's been... Um, a career, but I know that God has been there with me and, and protected me and been there through all of my, my life. And I, I pray continually that he doesn't stop uh, and also guides our three sons, a fireman and, and two police officers, uh, as they finish off their careers, their lives. So your family is actually continuing your legacy um, on and... Uh, one smart one. <laughs> Not a cop. <laughs> so uh, I am sure for both you and Lori, there's that vulnerability that you have had to um, uh, surrender those things you have no control over. Um, and uh, uh, in, in a in a vocation where you are called in so many ways to have control over settings uh, in which you enter. Uh, more than once you've had uh, s things that were out of your control. Um, and I don't think any of us can imagine what that fear feels like uh, unless we know what it is to be in a situation where we have no control. And all we can do is um, uh, as the song says, I'm yours, Lord. Take me. I'm yours. Um, uh, so I, I am uh, wondering now, as you look over your life, uh, Bud, do, do you regret not being a, uh, a ditch digger or a truck driver or a pastor? <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't change anything. There are things in my life that I would change, but nothing major. Um, I, I, I'm, I've been blessed. Uh, for my life, my career, my wife, she's, I don't know how she put up with me. <laughs> we don't time. know either, bud, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> no, and if she talks, don't listen to her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, so often I've, I've been out in, on the dirt, in the dirt, uh, doing things that uh, most people don't have a clue and, and survived it and, and, and came out of it the way it should have happened. But I, I look around me and I, I know that each and every person here has done similar kinds of things in their own way. You know, had similar types of uh, trials, tribulations. I, I, I look at my career and I, I look at my wife and I, I, she was a teacher's aide. Most people think, well, that's not a big deal. but. She was a teacher's aide for special ed, and um, the kids that she worked with were Down syndromes. They were uh, ADHD. They they were nonverbal. They had sicknesses, and she had to help them when they went to the bathroom. And I look at her and I, how in the world did she she do this? I mean, there's no way in the world. I'd rather go fight somebody than <laughs> take care of this. So I just and I know every person in here. Uh, has had similar experiences where you know you do what you have to do but the whole time if you can stay focused on God who is our, our, our life our protector our creator then um, then we can get through it sometimes our heartfelt prayers uh, are not answered in the ways we wanted or hoped and sometimes as you experienced in Baby Ben, death enters in, and our prayers uh, take a different switch, unexpected ways. Um, in the midst of grieving a death or a loss or a trauma and the after effects, um, and we learn through that suffering. And um, uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, but it sounds like the learnings that you gained 
uh, were that you weren't alone in the midst of that um, and that uh, somehow you survived the unspeakable um, and got through what uh, for most of us would knock the air out of our lungs and we would feel like we could never get up again. And, and yet you did that, you did the unthinkable. Um, and uh, I think that part of the story that we embrace with Jesus is that he did the unthinkable and he walked a path showing us that we can do that as well. Um, and part of the function of the book of Hebrews is to remind us that Jesus is our leader in the faith, our priest to show us the way. Uh, and in no way should we ever make this mistake that Jesus didn't cry out to God in pain and tears, didn't question the path that he was on um, because he was human. The text says, in the days of his flesh, he had the feelings of a human being. And if he wasn't, then how could we ever be expected to follow him through times of suffering and doubt and confusion? Um, on the front of your bulletins, you see uh, a picture which I think is pathetic of Jesus kneeling in prayer with children. Uh, Jesus praying with the children. Um, and I think that's an image that we can hold on to every day of our life. When we are confronted with choices regarding who we're going to be, who we're going to listen to with all the voices that bombard us in this world and what path we are going to follow. And I think it's a process of being chiseled and modeled into the person that God created us to be. As you talk about at the beginning, um, uh, you were given options by your high school advice uh, counselor, um, and you walked away from all of those. Although I would make the argument that today I think you are a preacher. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because <laughs> with Je yeah, you want to argue of this? We can do that. With Jesus as our guide, uh, God calls all of us to be preachers. Maybe not the paid uh, pa uh, staff of clergy. But God calls all of us to be ministers, to share our story uh, that is shaped by our mentor. And we, by doing so, sometimes find a hidden path towards wholeness, wellness, and hope. And I commend you, Bud, for being vulnerable in these moments because uh, that is sometimes our calling as followers of Jesus, is to be vulnerable and share our story. Because Jesus' path becomes our hope that one day we will all, as children of God, realize peace on earth, goodwill to all. Amen. 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 Thank you, bud. Thank you very much. As we prepare to gather at a table of storytelling, and sharing our faith together, I invite you to prepare to take communion. And as we do, we're going to see number 609, Take My Life, verses 1 through 4. Stand if you're able to sing together.
Jesus Christ is clear. His disciples, we are called to give. Our salvation is based upon our acceptance of Christ. And we are called to serve others. Let us receive our offering. This is for all the Irish. Okay. Those of you who aren't Irish. <laughs> Celebration. received. <coughs> Jesus watched the crowd put money into the temple <coughs> treasury. The rich threw in large amounts, but a poor widow gave a few cents. Jesus said, truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. She gave everything she had everything she had to give. Amen. Please be seated.
already, I already did the meditation earlier. <laughs> I can repeat it. <laughs> That's what I heard again.
If you have come to the time where you want to accept Jesus as your Messiah, or you want to be a member of this congregation as we seek to walk that path together, we ask that you come forward as we sing our hymn of a commitment. Oh, Jesus, I have promised. We'll sing verse one only. Verse one only. Please stand if you're able to sing together. Christ may guide you by the grace of the Holy Spirit. 